Hi everybody, my name is Dean, and today we are looking at a Sega Genesis console. This is a Sega Genesis Model 2, and there's a slight issue with this console where I was told it doesn't work. And I looked at it, and I did find a couple of things that might be wrong, but it does indeed work. So problem number one I found is the power supply that came with it. While it does look like it's all there, is not. If we compare it to a working power supply, we notice that this yellow tip is broken off. It's supposed to stick out of the end of the plug. So it was commented that the plug fits very loosely in the console. Well, if the end of it's not there, it's not going to plug in well. So that's not fixable, as far as I know. And that's going to get trashed. Well, I guess you could connect a different connector on the end, but we're not going to go that far. So with a cleaned up cartridge and a new power supply, well not new, but new to this console, ta-da, it works. It works just fine. I have the sound turned off on the small little test TV. But yes, it does work now. The other problem, and this is the other reason to believing it wasn't a power supply issue, was that the little this little three vent looking hole thing, the three slots, it lights up red normally. It does not light up. And when it was said, hey, this doesn't light up, this system doesn't boot. Well, Genesis don't really boot. They, they boot by the cartridge. As far as I know, there's no boot ROM that loads anything if there's no cartridge present. Uh, I could be talking out of my ass here, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Unlike a Sega Master System that when you have no cartridge in it, it does give the intro screen and boots the onboard game. A Genesis does nothing. If it's connected to a Sega CD, that's different because the Sega CD takes over and it loads. But as far as this goes, it needs a cartridge to do anything. So, anyway. So my goal is to find out why does that red light not light up. So that's what we're gonna do. So I decided, instead of me just fixing this myself, which is what this project tonight was going to be, I'm actually going to take it apart for you guys. And we can see how a Genesis to Model 2 is disassembled. Here's the bottom. There are four screws holding this in, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew them now. Now that is all there is to take this off. There is no screw underneath this paper. It feels like something's here, but there's nothing there. Don't rip that paper. I mean, you can if you want to, but I would not. I kind of just pull the upper casing off of the bottom like that, and off it comes. Now, bear in mind that most Genesis consoles have not come apart since, you know, they were made in the 90s. So they're going to be a little tiny bit stuck. So now we can see the inside. Well, we can see what, what we can see of it, which is not very much. Now, as you can tell, we have where the cartridge slot goes. I'm sorry, where the cartridge goes in the cartridge slot. A heat sink for something. And the, right here, if I can get it in frame, is the connector for the Sega CD. So we want to get underneath of this uh, metal shielding. So this is quite a few more screws so if you look around the perimeter of this casing there are several gold screws on it hey look there's one and we just want to go ahead and unscrew all of those cue the fast forward All right, and that should be all of our screws. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of these little tiny gold screws. Keep them somewhere where you're not going to lose them. Number eight was on the board still. As you can tell, that's how easy that came off. Ta da! Into the pile of stuff that you cannot see. So here we are. We have a main board and the only board of a Sega Genesis Model 2. It's pretty simple. 
is the what I would assume is the main processor. And there's other processors along the uh, sides and whatnot here. I don't know all of these, but this is what we're looking for right here. This is the red LED that should light up those three little vents when the system's powered on. Now, what is wrong with it? So if you get real close, if the camera wants to focus, that LED is very much broken. I don't even think you can see it well, but it's, um, it's cracked. I was hoping that it was something where, like, maybe the lead came off or something similar and I could solder it back down, but unfortunately, it's very broken, so... I mean, the system works fine, just it's not going to light up the little LED anymore. Yeah, see if I touch the little pieces actually fall out of it, or fall off of it. So there's our culprit, there's the problem, oh. is the little red LED, I don't know how it would have got that way, but it's broken. I mean, it could have been broken from the factory. So we're going to go ahead and figure out what we're going to do with this. Anyway, so what I figure, at least I would show you guys, is that how to fully take the rest of this console apart. So we're going to go ahead. There's only two more screws, actually, to get the main board out of the casing. So if there's a screw here on either side of the cartridge connector. So at first glance, you would think that those two screws are only holding this connector down to the board. But in reality, they're actually threaded through the board, through the connector and they're holding it into the bottom of the case. So a couple of spins, actually I shouldn't say a couple of spins. Um, on the whole console, these are the longest of screws. So usually I get them a little loose. And it should, yep, there we go. It's lifting right off the board now. And up it comes. I kind of, if you pick it up at an angle, it'll kind of clear the uh, controller ports right here. So we flip that over, we can see the bottom of the cartridge slot and everything else on this uh, on this board. The LED is actually these two leads right here. So if we do decide to get adventurous, we can desolder the LED and resolder a new one in there. So what we'll do is we're just going to go ahead and pretend we did that. Um, at some point, I may do that, I'll be honest with everybody. I'm not so confident with my soldering abilities that I can that I can safely re-solder a new LED in there. Um, it is something I'm definitely working towards, but at this point, on this very time, not quite there yet. So what we'll do instead is just pretend that we fixed something on here. We fixed something that was loose. Uh, best example I can give is right here. These three solder pads are uh, the solder connections for the uh, DC power, sorry, the AC-DC power supply that goes in right here. Uh, the other Genesis Model 2 I had would have a situation where if you wiggled the uh, power adapter, it would turn the system on and off. I found that the solder around this point right here had cracked. So I was able to just literally, no new solder, I just heated up the joint with the soldering iron right on the tip of that piece right there and I just held it in place and just by heating that the solder reflowed itself back around the pin I let it cool put it all back together and the console worked perfectly fine so let's pretend that's the one I just did just to just to feel like we did something um, overall the rest of this is actually pretty clean despite the the casing itself being uh, nasty as shit uh, the rest of this console is actually pretty good so when you put these in, obviously, you this thing should sit pretty much level. And when you're pushing down, do not accidentally push on any of these capacitors. Because if you break one of those off, then, well, then you're fixing something else. So we're just going to get this settled. So I'm finding this is not sitting flat in here, and the reason for that is that when I unscrewed it, the screw right here on the side of the cartridge slot did not come back through. It's just kind of spun in place and loosened up this connector down here. So what we're going to do is, with this in my hand, I'm going to unscrew this the rest of the way. And it actually seems like it's pretty stuck in there. 
little problem. So let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so I was able to push the screw up. It's up far enough where it's not going to hurt anything. So now we can go ahead. Now if this guy moves, this little piece here, this is pretty much the support of the console when you push a cartridge down that you don't push and break the motherboard. So with that there, now we'll put this back in. And now it sits pretty flat. That ticking noise is my water heater for anybody curious on what that noise actually is. So with that in place, we have one and two of these screws around the cartridge slot. And we're just going to go ahead and screw them all the way back down into the little support that's underneath this cartridge slot. And there we go. Now, in case you want to test anything before you go any further, we can quickly hook up the power and the AV. This is something I generally recommend doing. Once the motherboard is situated back into the console, I like to make sure it works. So we'll just very gently put the Sonic cartridge back on here. The blue switch right here is the power button. And look at that, it's not coming on. So why is it not coming on? Well, probably because without everything moving around, it probably just got dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this cartridge quick, quite quick. Just use a Q-tip and off camera. So we just got some cleaner on a Q-tip. I just used Windex or glass cleaner and ooh, that's dirty. Put this back in, turn it on. Hey, look at that. A working console. I don't have the control connected, so. But you can clearly see Sonic. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the console together. And that's always why I like to do that, because if I had accidentally not connected something here, not that there's anything else really on here, but say if there was a secondary board that connected to the console and you forgot to connect it and you get the whole case together, and you realize, oh, I didn't connect something, it's not powering up, I don't know why. It could be a ribbon, it could be something in here. As you go through, any major steps you go through as you connect things, just test it. It's easy enough. If you don't have a little small test TV, just get some kind of TV. Or anything, really. So, next big step is going to be to put the, um, I keep calling it a heat shield, it's an RF shield. Here's the RF shield. It only fits on one way, and we actually have a screw that was a little stubborn. I guess maybe there were nine screws on this. I miscounted. So we'll put that back on. There we go. I'm just going to aim the camera slightly more down so you guys can see it. There we go. Shield's back on. So now, seeing there are so many screws for this part, we're going to go ahead and fast forward this part. Welcome back. The R shield has been put back on, it's all screwed in. Uh, as always, double check, both controller slots are accessible, AV and power connectors are accessible, and just like before, because, I mean, it only takes a second, let's go ahead and plug in the power, plug in the AC, put the slot cartridge back in the non-existent slot, power back on, and we see the Sega intro logo thing. It works still. Okay. So, final step. The cover. I will say that out of many consoles, these Model 2 Genesis consoles are pretty simple to uh, assemble and disassemble. And if you look just there, I broke one of my own rules. I didn't disconnect these cords before I did something else with the case. Uh, so I just had to put the case back on. It literally just slides back on top. Check all your seams, make sure there's no gaps, nothing looks weird. So we can flip her over and we can put the four outer case screws back in. 
And I usually like to say this too, when you're putting anything together that has screws that are all spaced out like this, is one in each corner, um, in the same way you would, if you've ever done it, put a tire on a car, sorry, put a wheel back on a car after changing a tire, you want to kind of crisscross the screws, as in put one on and then put the one across from it on and then do that opposite. Don't put them on in a row because if it's not sitting quite right, you could kind of have it lopsided. It's not that likely to happen, but it could. And there we go. So, last step's complete. Genesis Model 2 reassembled. And just for good measure, just like before, go ahead and plug these cords back in. I can't see the back one. Cartridge in. System on. And it works again. So. I was hoping to call this a repair video on how to fix a broken LED. But at this point, I guess this is a how to disassemble and reassemble a Sega Genesis Model 2. I do plan on fixing the LED. I just want to um, learn how to solder a little better before I do it. So we will fix that. So this system will come back apart again. So maybe this will be a extended part 2. But, um keep an eye out and uh again thanks for watching